how is fear created? Well, there are numerous ways uh, of how fear is created. Um, but maybe if we look at four primary ways that fear is created, it'll give everyone a bit of an idea of where it actually comes from as an emotion. Firstly, um, fear is created whenever love is withdrawn. Mm -hmm. So this is a very important factor that most people need to understand about fear. Usually when we're in a situation where love, the feeling of love has been withdrawn from us, and by this I mean the feeling of love that we could feel before that situation began, yes. is withdrawn from us because of the situation, mm -hmm. we then have a tendency to fear the situations that cause the withdrawal of love. So, so maybe we could have some examples, yes. just some simple examples that are physical in nature. Yep. So let's look at a sample of, like I'm afraid of a spider. Mm -hmm. Most people are not actually afraid of spiders when they're young, when they're little. In fact, many of people have probably have memories of picking them up and looking at them in wonder. But when a parent has come along and expressed anger, rage, and even sometimes violence towards the child for picking up the uh, spider, now there is a direct connection in the child between the actual physical thing they've picked up, the spider, yeah. and the withdrawal of love, the, which is the fear-based expression of the parent. Yeah. So the, the parent has gone into violence, or at least into rage, mm -hmm. or fear, mm -hmm. which all cause the withdrawal of love. Mm -hmm. And when we have withdraw love withdrawn from us, most people have, feel that quite terribly when we have love withdrawn. And as a result, we now link the withdrawal of love to the event. Yeah. So in other words, instead of blaming the withdrawal of love on the fact that our mum or dad are being stupid <laughs> or the fact that they have got fear or whatever else, the little mind, you know, the child's mind doesn't make all of those assumptions. It just has a very simple re e equation within it. And that is, I took an action, I picked up a spider, mum and dad went berserk, yeah. right? And perpetrated all of this unloving actions towards me as a result, I now feel afraid of the spider yeah. because love has been withdrawn. Mm -hmm. So that's a large reason why love gets withdrawn, uh, why fear, fear gets created, the, the withdrawal of love from the individual. Mm -hmm. and, um, and most people uh, who have childhood fears and childhood, what do we call them now? Um, where, where phobias. phobias yeah. uh, they are all caused by the withdrawal of love in certain situations. So the reason why someone might be afraid of a snake or a spider or any physical creature is usually always being caused by the withdrawal of love in the same situation. And of course, I'm sure we could go into many other subtleties or, or not so subtle things, but less tangible things, couldn't we, in childhood, um, where a child is in a situation where maybe even mum and dad are just having an argument yes. and love, they don't feel There's a love. reject withdrawal of love in an argument. And so then there's an association and fear exists so, around whatever the... So now there's an association in the child yeah. regarding relationship yeah. with the opposite gender. Yeah. And whenever there's a raising of voices or whatever, they, they know fear is... They, through their fear, the fear is created because yeah. they, they believe now love will be withdrawn. Yes. So, so somebody might, might be able to be sort of angry and not sin, you know. So mm -hmm. somebody might be angry and just go into a room and just express their anger. Yeah. But the person who's sitting outside who's had that childhood experience will feel love's being withdrawn from me now. I'm afraid, I'm, I'm afraid. afraid. I'm What's afraid, I'm afraid. What's yep. wrong with that person? And this yep. is why a lot of people are afraid of a person who feels their anger, even if that person feeling their anger is doing so in complete harmony with love and truth. Yeah. So, so, yes. so this is the sad part about what happens emotionally is we have all of these things about, from the withdrawal of love, all of these associations have made emotionally inside of the child, which then causes the child to falsely believe that certain things will occur. Mm -hmm. And then of course, when that child grows to be an adult, the childlike emotion is frozen at the point that it's created. Yeah. So in other words, if it was a three-year-old experience, the child is going to act like a three-year-old in every one of those experiences, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Until that emotion is released. Yeah. So, so if a, a person goes into a room and expresses rage, the child who has net to release this fear of the anger between mum and dad and how it was expressed is going to go into terror about somebody even doing something that's quite safe. Yeah. And, and, and so therefore the, child, the, the adult is really acting like a child at the same yeah. age. 
yeah. which is another way, problem with fear in that fear has, when it's created, has created at the age it's created. Yeah. So, so this is why we have unreasoning fears with regard to some phobias, mm -hmm. because at the age those phobias were created, we couldn't reason. And as a result, it's like this terrible terror goes through us uh, and it's very childlike because, you know, we're an adult now with this little tiny spider and we're afraid. What's going on, you know, yeah. or a mouse or whatever it is that we're afraid of. Yeah. And, and these are all because of the associations are now locked within us mm -hmm. at the age in which they were created. Yeah. And so that's why we have such an unreasoning uh, response to the emotion yeah. flowing. Yeah. And that's why we want to suppress it. Yeah. 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 Okay. So there's the withdrawal of love that can create fear. What else can create fear? The second thing is the withdrawal of truth. Of course, truth and love from God's perspective go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. they, they are joined. And as a result of that, every time love is withdrawn, truth is usually also withdrawn. And every time truth is withdrawn, love is also usually withdrawn. So in a childhood experience, you know, it could be where we went home, for example, and, and we told mummy and daddy that we told our next door neighbour they weren't very nice because that's what mummy said, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and uh, mummy then goes berserk, yeah. uh, telling us that we should have lied. Uh -huh. Now truth is withdrawn and love is withdrawn in that moment. Yeah. So now we'll become very afraid of telling somebody the truth. Yeah. Very afraid. And that fear will be locked up at that age. Yeah. So if it happened when I was five, I will feel like a five-year-old every time I'm put in a position where somebody's asking me for the truth. Mm -hmm. Every time. Yeah. I'll feel like a five-year-old because that emotion has yet to be released from me. And, and so I am going to have the feeling that something terrible is going to happen by telling the truth. Mm. Right? So this is the sad effect of truth being withdrawn it causes fear to then class changes our filter. Yeah. And therefore we then, we then think and feel that every time truth is confronted, we'll almost have a tendency to want to lie mm. automatically without even understanding why. Yeah. Uh, uh, with that example, having truth withdrawn, I was just um, wondering about things like racism or um, things where there is no truth coming from our environment as a child mm -hmm. on a certain issue. So truth is withdrawn in that sense. There's no truth about uh, that everyone is one of God's children, that we're all equal. In yeah, I would classify that as another type of experience, which okay. is lies masquerading as truth, which is uh -huh. another, you know, which is I think the fourth one we've got on our list Oh, here. okay, sorry, yeah. I'm jumping ahead, I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah. Because uh, to me, that kind of example is where lies, which is I'm big, better than you, is a lie, mm -hmm. and I'm better than you because I'm a different colour than you is a, is a, is a double lie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and those are lies masquerading curating as truth. They always cause fear to be created inside of the individual. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's, uh, I feel that's that kind of flavour of the creation of, 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 of the fear-based emotion. Got you. Yeah. All right. So yeah. love's withdrawn, truth withdrawn, lies masquerading as truth. Lies masquerading as truth. Yep. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little yep. more. This is something that is well uh, done here on earth. Yeah, <laughs> you know, when I absolutely. say well done, it's sad that it's so well done. Yeah. But most people have no idea how many lies they're told in the course of a day that, that they then believe are truths. And unfortunately, they create fears within the soul. So for example, as an example, the snake's poisonous, it will bite you, right, is a lie masquerading as a truth. Mm -hmm. Like snakes don't want to bite you. Yeah. <laughs> they usually only bite when they're afraid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So generally, a, a person who's not afraid of a snake can generally just pick up a snake and they'll be fine. Yeah. Right? So a snake will only bite you when they're afraid. Yeah. So that's the truth. Yes. But, but see, that's not what's said. Mm -hmm. What's said to the child is, it's a snake, it will bite you and it's poisonous. Yeah. In other words, you're going to die or you're going to get very sick if you, if you allow this snake to bite you. So you're better off killing the thing. Yeah, and right. certainly be very afraid <laughs> yes. of the snake. There's a feeling of, of needing to be afraid of this snake as a result, right? Yeah. And this is, this is, these are lies masquerading as truth. We don't understand, as adults many times, we don't understand the physical effect that has on the child. It enters the child as an emotion, mm -hmm. right, on a lot of levels. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, they then believe that for the rest of their life. They base many of their actions around it and mm -hmm. 
creates emotion within a child of fear yeah. about those particular things occurring. So if the parent has a fear of death mm -hmm. or a fear of getting sick, right, both fears are also lies. Yeah. There is no need to fear death because we continue living. And there's no need to feel getting, fear getting sick because it, it's an indication there's something wrong emotionally. It's just a response to an emotion. There's no need to be afraid of it. So there's no need to be afraid of any of these things, right? But the fact the parent has the fear means there's with often a com combination now occurring with the child. The child has love withdrawn from it because their parent's in fear. The child is told a lie, which is another withdrawal, it's a withdrawal of truth, mm -hmm. another fear. And the child is, ha ha have truth that has lies masquerading as truth presented yeah. to it in other words now there's three different creators in the one event yeah. of why the child has so much fear and it's all emotional mm -hmm. it's all stuff now that's been created emotional through the event and and man it, that makes it very very difficult for the child later in life to actually deal with the phobia of snakes yes because yes. there's all these lies and there's, <laughs> there's yes. all these truth withdrawn and there's all this love withdrawn all at the same time yeah yeah and 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 of course the child is going to feel quite confused and often not only confused but quite distressed yeah. about those circumstances and because it's distressed and then suppressed mm -hmm. it's locked up that emotion at that age yeah. so now that the adult 35 years old looks at a snake and responds as if it was three years or four years old yeah. it responds in the same way yeah with the same responses even though it's now an adult is able to protect itself there's nothing to fear it has more control over its environment than it did when it was a child even though all those things are true mm -hmm. the child the adult doesn't think those things are true because it's thinking like a child yeah. because the emotion of the child which is locked up inside the adult is driving the entire proceeding yeah, so you're actually saying that fear is created when these events happen when we're a child. And then you're saying, and then it's usually suppressed, which means that we carry that fear. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So yep. Um, fear is created, and as we mentioned in the previous question, we have the opportunity just to feel it and it will be gone, um, but usually it's suppressed. And so these things that happen when we're adults, when we begin to feel afraid, it's not the creation, that's not creating fear. It's the thing that was suppressed. The original creation happened a long time ago. Yes. Presumably if we were a child and we allowed, we were allowed to feel the fear as it was created. Well, by definition, that's probably not going to be the case <laughs> because uh -huh. most parents inculcate these particular fears inside into the child and suppress them on purpose. Yeah. So it's very unlikely that the child feeling all of that fear would have been allowed to experience it. Because it is the parent's own suppressed fear that is generating the fear in the child. And also generating the withdrawal of love, the withdrawal of truth, and the lies masquerading as truth. So, so all of these things are happening because of the parent's condition. It's highly unlikely the parent then is going to allow the child to feel it. <laughs> because the parent hasn't even learnt to allow itself to feel it. Yeah. So, yeah. so the reality is that yes, in theory, if the child was allowed to experience all of those emotions, it would have been fine. But in practice, it's not allowed to experience all of those emotions. And that's why the parent is, is pushing these things on the child in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, in practice, yes. it, it, it's very highly unlikely for the child to go through a complete experience where they're allowed to feel the fear in the moment that the fear is created. Mm. Okay, let's talk about the fourth way that mm -hmm. fear is created. Mm -hmm. um, so this is having codependent addiction masquerading as love. Yes. This is a juicy one. Yes, so remember, if we look at, there's a relationship between everything we're looking at. So remember I said there's withdrawal of truth mm -hmm. and then there's the lies masquerading as truth. Yep. So with regard to truth, they are the two sources, the primary sources of damage to the child in terms of fear. Uh -huh. With love, there's love being withdrawn yeah. or lies masquerading as love, which is addictions masquerading as love. Uh -huh. So it's the same principle. Yeah. So, so this fourth principle, which is lies masquerading as love or really addictions masquerading as love. In other words, nice feelings masquerading as the real nice feelings. <laughs> yeah. Fake nice feelings masquerading as real nice feelings. 
So, so this is uh, the kind of feelings that cause a shutdown inside of the person with fear. So, so for an example, the child starts to feel something from this environment, right? And becomes a little afraid of what's going on. The parent picks up the child and hugs the child mm -hmm. and says, there, there, you don't have to feel this, right? In that moment, the parent is in an addictive masquerade of love with the child. They're not really loving the child because the real love of the child would allow them to experience their own terror and fear. Would they pick up the child? They may pick up the child, but mm -hmm. they would never go there forever. You would never, don't have to feel this fear. Mm. They, say, You're they okay would allow the fear to be yeah. felt. Yeah. In fact, they would actually say the opposite. They'd yeah. say, you can feel this fear. Mm -hmm. right? They'd teach their child that they have the capacity to feel the fear. Yes. But when they go, no, 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 it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, all the parent's really doing is allaying their own fear, yeah. right? So the parent is teaching the child to suppress fear through the masquerade of love. Mm -hmm. Addiction, in mm -hmm. other words. Mm -hmm. They're teaching the child to become addicted, right? Which is always going to create worse situation and more fear. Yeah. Right? Very, very damaging thing to do to the child. And it's often these, these so-called loving things that we do to the child, which are actually addictions, that are the more damaging mm -hmm. because they are harder to unravel. Mm -hmm. It's often easy for the child to see when love with was withdrawn than it is for the child to see when there was an addiction masquerading as love. Yes. And it's often easier for the child to see when truth is withdrawn mm -hmm. than it is for the child to see a lie masquerading as truth. Yes. So the problem with the masquerading emotions is that they create further things to unravel intellectually and emotionally for the child. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's sometimes more difficult to recover from a, a so-called non-abusive, quotation, loving environment, yeah. which is really all based around addictions and lies, yeah. than it is to recover from a blatantly unloving and untruthful environment where somebody has been abused. Mm. And, and this is the problem that we face, is that the reason why it's often easier to recover is because the masquerade is more difficult to detect than the actual withdrawal. Yeah. And this is a problem with recreation of fear. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most of our fears revolve around the masquerade, not around the withdrawal. Yeah. So, so what we end up f having is these deep masquerades of love and, and lies masquerading as truth. So addictions masquerading as love and life masquerading as truth. And we see these two things in, in the life going on and we believe them to be truth and love. And then we don't understand why we have so much fear. Yeah. The reality is we have huge amounts of fear related to those things because they are all masquerades and they're, they are very, very difficult to unravel. And they've given us false definitions of what is real, Correct. what is really truth and what is really love. They and have totally distorted reality from God's perspective. And so of course we're gonna live in a lot of fear. Yes. Uh, when you live in total distortion of reality from God's perspective, you will have lots of fear. Mm -hmm. And you won't even know it. Mm -hmm. You won't even know it. You'll think you'd have none, in fact. You think you'll be brought up by a loving, uh, ha happy family and loving environment. But as soon as somebody starts triggering you, the emotions that are triggered show you, wow, this is painful. Yeah. This shows me I, I must have had a lot of stuff masquerading going on yeah. if this is such a painful experience. And this is often the cause of, of deep d diseases that kill you. So mm -hmm. cancers, for example, are a lot about lies masquerading as truth and, and addictions masquerading as love. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you trace them back to their sources, you'll see generally that's what's occurred in the families of people who get cancers. Mm. And, and they are very, very damaging emotions that cause the destruction of your physical body along with the harm to your soul and the harm to the soul of those creating them. And, and yet we have often no idea that they're occurring. In fact, many, most, of, uh, most of society believes that many of the lies are true yeah. and that many of the addictions are love. Yeah. And you see this all the time. So and you everywhere. see it, you know, you see it in your television shows, you see it in newspaper clippings, you see it, you see it in the way society works yeah. even. There's all these, addictions that are masquerading as love and lies masquerading as truth and and the majority of us have a sense that it's something wrong and also the majority of us are in a lot of pain as a result of these things occurring 
and yet we make no change because there's a lot of fear associated with them. Yeah. And, and it is very difficult to confront the masquerade. In fact, it's the confrontation of the masquerade that is often more explosive than just the confrontation of the facts. Yes. Right? Or, you know, in other words, knowing that you've had with love or truth withdrawn is a confrontation of the fact. A confrontation of the masquerade is you, you've had love and truth withdrawn, but they th say that you haven't. Yeah. And that's a, con a confrontation of the masquerade. And that is very, very difficult. And, and usually v that's when all sorts of family issues come up. You know, families don't talk to each other for years and years because when you start confronting the masquerade, yeah. most families want to keep the masquerade. Yes. Uh, whereas a family generally who's withdrawn love and truth will be honest and say, yeah, I probably didn't love you or yeah. I, I probably didn't you know, care about you. That's yeah. true. <laughs> and know. for the individual, that helps them to uh, be more honest, which helps them with their fear. Yes. Whereas when there's an ongoing denial of the very situation that generated the fear, yes. it is much harder to begin to, there's a whole other range of fears that have to be gone through in order to connect with. Well, you have to unravel all of the addictions. Yeah. And, that, that, and the addictions are going to be intense when there's lies masquerading as truth and, and addictions masquerading as love. Yeah. The addiction level is going to be intense to feel. Yeah. And as a result, many people who start that process, you know, take four or five years before they get beyond that process, even when they're doing it sincerely. Yeah because there is a lot to unravel yeah. and, and it's because of the masquerade. Yeah. So it's one thing to do a certain thing, it's another thing to lie about it and tell the person that it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. and, you know, even yeah. though it did happen. It's like, it's like punching someone in the nose and telling them it didn't happen. Yeah. Yes. And, and that's a lot worse than punching someone in the nose and actually saying, yeah, I did do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> often there's a fear of even saying, no, you did punch me in the nose because there's a fear of another punch in the nose. Correct. Um, yes. Uh, Not only another punch in the nose, but a complete denial and ridicule of the fact that you believed it happened. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just so damaging. It just causes so many layers of problems inside of the soul. And this is the major creator of these fears. Mm. So fear is mostly created by those fourth series of events occurring. Yeah. And usually it's not one of them by themselves. It's uh -huh. usually, one, you know, usually in tandem or all four occurring at the same time yeah. that causes most of our fear. So just to recap, mm -hmm. there's having love withdrawn. Yes. Having truth withdrawn. Yes. Having codependent addiction masquerading as love. Yes. And having lies masquerading as truth. truth. Yes. And you sort of highlighted them with some physical examples, but obviously all of these things apply in terms of the emotional environment. Far more so. Yeah. Far more so apply emotionally. You know, yeah. the, what happens emotionally is far worse often than the physical. Sometimes, though, it helps us to look at a physical event and say, oh, well, yeah, I can see it quite plainly occurring there. Yeah. But from an emotional perspective, yes, far more serious. Because, because most people are desensitised from their emotions as well, mm. which means that we are not sensitive to the fact that these particular things have occurred emotionally. And that makes it very, very difficult for us to, to actually really face our true fears. Mm -hmm. And so for most people, the majority of their true fears are emotional. They're not physical <laughs> in nature or intellectual in nature. They're all emotional. They are all based on belief systems that are deeply ingrained emotionally inside of them as a result of those four things being engaged by their environment, by people in their environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. You know, you, you get it at school, you get it at work, you get, but when a child's growing up, obviously it's mostly at home and at school. Mm -hmm. And both schools and home generally encourages the lie masquerading as truth and the, the addiction masquerading as love. Mm. And unfortunately, uh, it causes huge amounts of damage to the child. So by the time we're 12, 13, 14, 15, we've got so much damage that now there's law of attraction going on. Where, so the God's law of attraction is bringing to us a consciousness of this damage. But we're in so much denial of even trying to be conscious of it at that age. Mm -hmm. Many times it's not until our pain increases to such a point, and usually that starts occurring during our 30s or 40s or 50s, that we start analysing what actually happened during our childhood. Mm. Mm. Very thorough, thank mm. you.